This fall saw a lot of young of the year perch. You know, I'm all about kind of replicating that exact size and color. You know, a lot of people really key in on color, but I think size is just as important when you're looking at forage and forage species that these wallies are hitting on. And nothing looks better than this little slab wrap. I mean, it looks identical to some of the, the young of the year perch that these wallies are spitting up here early ice. You know, one thing about yellow perch, especially up here, it seems like they're boom or bust spawners. You get years where there's just virtually no spawn. And then when you do have a spawn, they're just prolific spawners. And they're, that young of the year size is all, you know, just perfect inch and a half. I saw them this fall in the water column. Birds were diving for them. It's a, they're just a great forage species for all these walleyes. And most of the walleyes in this northern tier of the ice belt, I mean, this is what they're feeding on in Minnesota. It's young of the year perch. You see it, you know, from Lake Mille Lacs to lakes like Winnebagosh. Uh, Leech Lake, um, when you have those boom cycles, the young of the year perch, I mean, that's what they're keying on. So, you know, kind of matching that identical size and also that color scheme is really important. You know, up until now, most lipless crankbaits that we're fishing are really loud, right? The rip and wrap, for example, has that loud rattle chamber, which is great at times, but other times I want kind of a sleek, more of a subtle presentation. And that's what the slab wrap delivers. There's no noise to it at all. It sits nice in the water column. Fish is really vertical. Fish is heavy enough, but it doesn't have that beaded rattle chamber. It's a one-two punch for me. I've, I've usually got a, a rattle bait tied up right next to it. Now with that number six, I've got that tied up as well. Not very big. <laughs> I, I am liking how they're charging this bait though. They are smoking it. Sauger, just kidding. Look at how spotted this guy is though. It's a walleye, but look at the spots. Doesn't it look like a sauger almost? Whoa. Even though it's a little larger profile bait, fish this size, they're keying in on that size forage. So, you know, whether they're this size or up to eight pounds, I mean, that's what they're feeding on. I'm a huge fan of pitching lipless crankbaits, even jig and wraps in extreme cold water. I mean, prime example of that is fishing out in Green Bay, uh, Rainy River. I mean, I can cite lots of examples where those baits outfished live bait. And what I like about it is I'm not digging in a cold minnow bucket. Uh, another thing is a lot of times those fish, when you're jigging that slow minnow, they come up, they grab it half minnow, they're dropping it. Whereas if you rip that lipless crankbait past them, they feel that, they, they strike. It seems like it's something that's moving, they don't want it to get away. What I'm excited about fishing that slab wrap is a lot of times in real shallow water conditions, that rip and wrap or that loud rattle chamber kind of spooks those fish where it's a lot more subtle and it also falls slower. It falls a lot slower than a jigging wrap and it falls much slower than a rip and wrap. So it gives you a, a really great alternative for fishing those shallow water situations, even if the water temps are extremely cold. You know, it's interesting to follow fish movements you know, from peak feeding periods throughout the day and then again towards evening peak feeding periods. But it's also interesting to watch how the bait fish move during those periods as well because, you know, you'll see a lot of times where it's high sun and that sun comes up high in the sky and you'll see those perch shift up into shallower water. And then as soon as you get towards evening again, those, those perch, they want nothing to do with uh, any of those predators that are sliding up on top and they'll shift out into deeper water and they'll move. But it's amazing, you know, you'll be on the top edge of structure morning and evening and the wallies are cruising and they're looking for easy prey, an easy meal, somewhere they can ambush fish. And then as soon as that daytime, you know, that, that high sun or even just middle of the day, those fish will just slide out into the deeper basin and kind of cruise that area. It's not like they completely leave out into the basin, but they kind of cruise that deeper area. That could be gravel, it could be a mid-lake hump. You watch them on camera, it's almost like they're sharks and they're just kind of patrolling the area. But as soon as again, evening comes around and you get those peak feeding windows, boom, they're right back on top. They're much more aggressive. You can really tell what their body language, especially if you're watching them on an underwater camera. It's just neat to see that movement and that shift of bait fish and, and, and predator prey relationship. I'm fishing a Croy custom ice rod. It's a 36 inch blank. This is actually the outside eye rod designed for hole hopping. You know, I like those longer rod designs. What I like about it is you can build a lot of power and action into longer rods that you can't with short rods. And this one has really good backbone. This is great for fishing lipless crankbaits. Again, it's the outside eye rod, 36 inch blank. 
and you know line preference really comes down to the angler i love using braid for the no stretch factor you can feel everything most of my open water rods are braid especially when i'm pitching baits however when you're outside like this and things are freezing up it's just really tough to use braid line management becomes a key issue so i've really gone to this advanced mono uh, from suffix what i like about the advanced mono is it fishes a lot like a fluorocarbon you don't get the freeze up that you do with the braid but it's extremely low stretch i can feel everything and that's really important when you're fishing a bait especially like we are now we're 25 to 30 feet down you know if you can imagine fishing conventional mono you get a lot of memory but also you get that rubber banding effect you know where a fish hits you don't get all that sensitivity that you do with this line it's got extreme low stretch and again it's really really tough line it's become my favorite ice fishing line there he is they don't hesitate when they come in they just charge up to that bait they want that thing deucer out of here do with that they like that bait now i'm jigging it too it's it's kind of that cadence where you get them to come in and look at that he just inhaled it's just like a crankbait in the summer but i was saying that cadence where you're playing that cat and mouse is important especially with baits where you're not using live bait jigging it and working it up in the water column and then they just they pop into action actually this fish came up missed it the first time he completely missed the bait went past it and then look at that I mean, it's just like fishing a, a shad wrap in the summer. He just inhales that thing. And you see that a lot too when you're pitching those baits. Like we were talking earlier about fishing them in the spring and casting into that shallow water. Let it hit the bottom, momentarily jig it up. Let it hit the bottom, momentarily jig it up. And it's amazing how they just inhale that bait and just completely suck it in. There we go. All right. This guy back in there. You know, like that fish absolutely inhaled it. You know, the right size bait is key, regardless of the forage species. You know, we've been touching on uh, these young of the year perch, but a lot of lakes have young of the year shiner hatches, for example. I've seen it out here where you'll get a big shiner hatch and Rapala makes the perfect color scheme for that. And of course, in this number six slab wrap, it's just a great horizontal presentation. That is a good one too. <laughs> oh. Man, no hesitation, just came up and smoked that thing. Oh, that's what I love about using those horizontal baits. It's no messing around, you know. You don't get those sniffers. They just come in and smash it. Oh, that, what a screamer. I can barely set the hook. It's like one of those ones that you you hope you got hooks into him because he really just came up so fast you could barely set the hook on him. There's a swivel. Oh yeah. Good fish. <laughs> oh, I can't grab him. There we go. Nice walleye. Oh, that's fun. Just smash it. That's what makes fishing fun. That's what makes ice fishing fun, is that visual aspect of the fish just racing up and smoking that bait. Man, good walleye. I tell you what, next time, if you wanna try some horizontal presentations, try the number six slab wrap from Rapala. They make a lot of great colors. You can really dial it in, that young of the year hatch. Man, there it is right there. In a nutshell, walleyes can't resist it. <laughs>